and welcome to the Thursday edition of our coronavirus virtual town hall. We are glad you're here with us today. I'm Michael Wooten. Mary Alice is off over the next half hour. We are going to tackle your questions. First, when can you go to the dentist? They've only been open for emergency procedures. There is a push to change that. Plus, we're going to talk with a DC reporter to answer your questions about the federal government's financial response. Will you get another $1,200 stimulus check? And then later on, a question for all of our snowbirds who are returning to western New York after spending winter down south. We'll get to all of that. And a reminder right now that Kathy Hochul, the lieutenant governor, uh, is having a briefing at any moment. And that will be streamed on our website and also our app if you'd like to check that out. Let's now get into the three things that you need to know right now. And at number one, students will not be headed back to classrooms for summer school this year. Governor Andrew Cuomo saying today that distance learning will continue to be implemented over the summer. It's still too early, he says, to decide about classroom learning for the fall. At number two, for the first time since this health crisis began, Erie County is now reporting more than 4,000 people were tested in a single day. This happened yesterday, the most tests given in a single day. And with the rise in testing, the percentage of people testing positive has not gone up as of these latest numbers. And at number three, the Diocese of Buffalo announcing that it's working with parishes to put in place safety measures for when services will resume. Some of those measures will include blocking off certain pews to ensure social distancing and also the removal of community items like hymnal books and holy water bins. All right, let's now tackle some of your questions and we've been trying to get to the ones that you're asking us about the most and this is certainly up there pretty high. This one person asked if some elective surgeries are now allowed can we expect dentist offices to reopen soon? I worry there will be such a backlog. I will never get in and I need to. So the first thing you should know is that emergency dentistry has always been allowed. It was never stopped, but here's the update from the New York State Dental Association. The group is working to get offices open as quickly as possible, encouraging people now to write letters to legislators and to the state and to the governor. The group says only allowing emergency dental care threatens to hurt overall patient health. The association said, quote, it is unacceptable that our patients have been denied full access to dental care for more than 60 days. The health of patients whose care has been delayed for months is at risk as once manageable issues can quickly become urgent without treatment. So they are lobbying the state to try to re reopen quickly. Now, in the meantime, a lot of dentists here and really across the country are working hard to make sure that their practices are safe. Watch this. We do have quite a backlog. We have been closed for six weeks. The new normal means keeping patients safe in the age of COVID. We are wearing higher level masks, N95s. We are wearing face shields. Also, and we're wearing disposable gowns. This dentist has overhauled his office, investing in a new air filtration system, significantly reducing the number of patients he'll see each day and revamping waiting room procedures. Their temperature will be checked. Once everything is deemed OK, we will escort the patient to the chair where we'll be working. The American Dental Association has issued national guidelines, including hygienists using hand tools instead of automated devices and limiting drills. A recent national survey by that same group found three in 10 dentist offices didn't have any supply of N95 masks and nearly 18% had no face shields. Because of that and other worries, this dental hygienist says the industry isn't yet prepared to safely reopen. Aerosols generated in the dental office are unavoidable, whether it's by dentist drills, whether it's by hygienist instruments, or even the patients themselves who may need to cough. I would absolutely avoid going to the dental office with a non-emergent service. So there you can hear both sides of that issue, and there is a financial consideration here as well. One recent study found that almost half of the dental offices across the country could close if they're not able to start seeing patients by the end of August. All right, let's get on to our next question now, and this is also a financial one. A viewer named D emailed me and said, I've been listening to the news, but haven't heard for sure if the extra stimulus check is forthcoming and would I be entitled to a second check? And when will this take place? 
So at this point, we don't know for sure if there will be a second round of stimulus payments for individuals and families, but we know that negotiations are underway in Washington, D.C., and that is where Jerry Zrimsky joins us live right now. Jerry is the Washington Bureau Chief for the Buffalo News. Jerry, thank you so much for your time once again today. A couple questions for you, and I do want to start with what the viewer was bringing up there. These negotiations, uh, we know there's probably going to be another stimulus package, but the potential that payments are going to go out for individuals and families. How do you handicap that? I would say at this point in time, it doesn't look especially likely that that's going to happen, but everything could change in the month of June. There isn't the same urgency surrounding this bill that surrounded the other ones. And I think that the nation is kind of in a period right now where things are opening up. There's some economic optimism and that really actually does nothing to speed along the process in Congress toward a fourth bill. What will speed along the Congress is a real economic need that's, that's demonstrable. And you will have the unemployment numbers coming out at the, um, at the end of the first week in June, and they could be very high. They could be above 20%. I think that that could change the political dynamic and could spur Congress to come to an agreement. Now, as for that check, that uh, $1,200 payment, that was included in the HEROES Act, the Democratic uh, bill that the House passed last week, but Republicans are just rejecting that bill. The Senate uh, Republican leadership is rejecting that bill out of hand. So really, the two sides have to come together and start talking. Will the Republicans agree to that? There's an increasing sense among Repu Republicans that a lot of federal money went out, out the door really fast in the early rounds of this and that maybe we need to take a step back and be a little bit more fiscally cautious. So it's unclear whether that that uh, provision, those payments will, will be included. Yeah, the Treasury Secretary making that point that they've already spent a lot of money. Let's see how it plays out um, a little bit. The other thing I want to ask you about, Jerry, is this battle over funding for state and local governments. Um, we know that it, very dire situation right now, uh, really in a lot of places across the country. Listen first here uh, to what Governor Andrew Cuomo said about this today during his briefing. Loss of school aid, loss of hospital aid, loss of funding to local governments, that's police, fire, first responders. You know the equation. If we don't get federal funding, we will have to cut those areas about 20 percent. You think about a 20 percent cut and the impact that would have certainly a bleak financial picture, not just for New York State, but for Erie County, for the city of Buffalo and almost all of our localities. Um, do you think this assistance for state and local governments will be part of this future stimulus package, Jerry? Yes, as a matter of fact, I think it will be the heart and soul of the next stimulus package. And the reason I think that is that in the end, this problem is not just a, a, a blue state problem. Red states are having fiscal crises too. Uh, conservative communities are having fiscal crises too. And it's all because their tax revenue is not coming in, their sales tax revenue especially. And so I think there will be a consensus around that point. And again, I go back to those June job numbers. If you see the combination of a 20% unemployment rate with municipalities announcing layoffs, I think that pressure combined will, will, will push the negotiations forward to a point where there will be some sort of a deal on state and local aid. Mark Polenkars just told me to thank you uh, for saying that. Just kidding. Uh, but no, a, a lot is riding on this. It's a very serious situation and something we'll continue to follow very closely. Jerry, thank you so much for your time. It's invaluable. Appreciate it. All right, let's move on now to another viewer question, and this was texted to us. We've gotten many similar questions as well like this. Uh, this person said we had record low unemployment before this pandemic. Can you ask your experts how long it will take to get back to where we were? It is a great question, and we talked with a great expert from the group called SHRM. It's the Society for Human Resource Management. SHRM found that American workers collectively have lost 1.3 trillion dollars in income due to COVID-19. Think about that. And 20% of the loss has been to those who stayed employed. They didn't lose their jobs. So back to the viewer's question. Here is part of my conversation with Sherm's president and CEO. I think a lot of people wondering how long will a recovery take? How do you respond? Right. So it's a great question from the from from your your listening audience. And uh, so there are two answers to it. First, the economy itself, uh, every indication is that the economy will begin to rebound then the third and fourth quarter of this year and really take hold the beginning of 2021. Um, 
That's a different question, though, from when rehiring will occur, because one of the things that we have found as a result of, you know, it's the upside and the downside to COVID is a lot of employers have have now specifically stepped back and said, how can we be more efficient? How can we be as productive in an environment where, frankly, we may have lower revenues for a while or we've lost revenues? In fact, we just had some Sherm research to indicate that a number of CFOs have said they're looking at remote work, for example, going forward. And if, in fact, you have remote work, the consequences are there are some employees you don't need anymore. Uh, certain roles. Take, for example, Michael, if you were in a building, you had a, a headquarters office with 500 employees, a significant number of them were in facilities management. They were in security. They were in garage parking operations. Well, if you, out, if you send that entire workforce home to work remotely, you have a significant percentage of employees who no longer have jobs. So the jobs may trail the economy. Fascinating stuff. Mr. Taylor says to expect a slow recovery in terms of jobs in both big cities and in small communities. His team is going to be doing forecasting uh, for specific areas over the coming weeks and months. So we'll keep you updated as they get more of that data in. Uh, here's a question that we got texted to us recently. I would love an absentee ballot because of the coronavirus, but I'm a senior citizen and lack computer access. How do I request one? Well, there is good news for this viewer. All county boards of elections across New York State are required to send registered voters a letter or a postcard that they can just fill out, send back, and request an absentee ballot. We showed a picture of one of them yesterday here at 530. Uh, the return postage is already paid for you. All you have to do is sign the form, uh, fill it out, put the date on it, and then mail it back to your county board of elections. And then as soon as we get closer to the election, your ballot will just show up in the mail. You don't have to go online. Uh, so if you don't have internet access, that's okay. You also don't have to call or anything. Those are still options. So if for some reason you don't get this postcard in the mail and you want to reach out, uh, you can go online or you can also just call your county board of elections.